Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing our Austria into Rome run. Currently we are at the Germany step. Uh, the next step will be the HRE followed by Rome. So this is the current state of affairs. Last episode we did go on a rampage, which is, you know, why it says Germany everywhere. Uh, you know, everywhere we look, it's Germany. Pay F or press F to pay respects to uh, what remains of the USA. A little F in action. And then, uh, you know, this episode I think we will be doing much of the same. Uh, we notably do want to get uh, the United Netherlands to Dominion status before we form. Um, we can click at any point in time now. We can click uh, Central Europe, which is the HRE tag, um, and it, as long as you're on Monarchy, which we're not, but this is the HRE, we can click at any time we want, but if we make them a uh, Dominion first, we will full annex them, which doesn't seem like a lot, except for, you know, it's this over here. And this is maybe a, a little bit of a... We're trying to play a little bit too min maxi in that maybe we care too much about this and so we should have just formed it anyways. Uh, but this is the soup we're swimming in now, so this is what we'll be doing. Notably, um, you know, a lot of these powers have been reduced to really low based on two things we've been doing, which is we are annexing, hoovering up a ton of people, full annexing them, including, you know, every single one of these Indian miners. And this is, uh, this reduces the average, and we also have intentionally inflated our prestige by overbuilding navy in terms of what we would need. Uh, we don't need anywhere near this amount of navy, uh, especially there's all these new navies from annexing people. Um, we don't need anywhere near this uh, level, uh, but what it does is it increases our prestige and your uh, ranking is calculated on the basis of um, you either have to pass the threshold of the global average or a threshold that is based off of the leader. And so by uh, eliminating, uh, you know, countries, we raise the global average and by raising our prestige, we raise the leader percent you need. And you can see here, there's only three great powers remaining. And next time France, you know, steps out of line, we're just going to take Provence and Languedoc or however this is pronounced. Um, and uh, following that, uh, you know, they almost certainly will decay down considerably because they will lose all market access to anyone uh, except for us. And so um, this is kind of where we're going. We will just continue on our merry way, um, focusing on, uh, you know, annexing. But I think this episode will focus a little bit less on the conquest and it'll happen more in the background, maybe point some of it out. Uh, but instead, what we will be focused on is, you know, uh, maybe a little bit more on the economics as well as uh, getting ready to form the HRE. To that end, we actually, Voltaire had a criticism of the HRE, which is neither holy nor Roman. Now, we're going to make it Roman, uh, but we also have to make it holy. And so to that end, we're going to come into the buildings tab. We're going to scroll down and we are going to swap back everything to state run churches and be very more church oriented uh, in an attempt to kind of rebolster these guys. Now, it'll take quite a bit of time. If we click exit reform government, one of the problems we're having is that, um, we probably won't be able to swap until after Rome is made, but one of the problems is we have so many generals and admirals uh, that these guys just have absolutely enormous amounts of clouts on that basis, and so it's really hard for them to come up. You could see, look at all these like plus percentage from generals and so this type of stuff, and it all really adds up to quite a lot. And we could fire all these generals and force a rev, but we'll just wait until we form Rome, because then we'll be a completely new tag, and then we, I believe that we'll fire or kill all of our generals, and then we will maybe go religious. But if we can go religious in the meantime, we will. This is notably why we have not gone total separation at any point in time. We're staying on freedom of conscience to give us a little bit more flexibility. So we have ourselves a war um, to go after Portugal here. Uh, we had fiddled around with, uh, you know, a Papal States War, but then it got bugged out, so we just reloaded and restarted, and we are going uh, for Portugal and you know, China joined, so we're going to conquer Beijing, Shenzhen, Hebei, and Yunnan. And uh, this will be quite a bit of states. Uh, it'll be a nice little bump in GDP, but more importantly, souls. We will be getting quite a lot of souls out of this, uh, which we can then, you know, have migrate to, you know, our territories that are already very well built up. So the UK and Portugal are already fully occupied. Thresher machine, nice. Um, and, uh, you know, we have three landings coming in kind of in a choreographed fashion on Great Xing, you know, just to establish a lot more fronts. Uh, and these look like they'll get in pretty easily because they aren't, they don't have anyone secured defending. They're going off like this for whatever reason, um, looking to maybe add to this front. 
I'm guessing, uh, which Portugal created, but we just assigned some guys to. We have plenty of guys just in reserve there. If we need them to, um, to come on up, we can, uh, and we will, you know, start to get a pretty quick push off here. Each of these units has four generals, which means they can push on four states at once, if completely unopposed, and they are, so we will get a pretty fast occupation here on Xing. Yeah, man, that is real fast. Um, they also are using uh, some of these guys, the cavalry specifically, do have mobilization, uh, you know, as much as possible, rail transport, force march. Uh, in theory, truck transport would be nice because they, you see here, 35 days to get to the front. They could push immediately if they could get to the front faster, and so these will be, like, uh, a useful thing to do for front pushing in general. Uh, you can see they pulled a lot of guys off of these fronts, so what we will do is we will move some of these defensive armies to the fronts over here um, so that the push can be a little bit better uh, overall that way uh, our defensive armies catch their offensive armies and our offensive armies kind of do their own thing uh, let's just move this defensive army over here as well because you see this is a minus 27 front and so this will be you know with more frontage we can bring more of our guys to bear on them um and uh you know uk's out portugal's gonna be annexed in just a moment and there's not really much uh you know else to say about it so i just wanted to highlight why we took the provinces we took off of great Qing, because obviously it's not a border gore consideration because this is ugly as all hell um the first is uh hey bay we took because they have access to the kaiping mining company notably it does require that there's coal mines greater than level 11 even though it says beijing and hey Beijing doesn't actually have coal mines, so you can't get this with Beijing. It must be with Hebei, and this is one of the best companies in the game. It's notably very easy to spike the productivity, uh, you know, on this one. Uh, much easier than Sulfur Plus Railway, although we have uh, the Sulfur Plus Railway productivity. And anything that has, you know, a railway is going to be really good, and coal is one of the better minerals to, you know, have. You know, the best is probably iron, and then it's probably coal. Uh, and so this is going to be, uh, you know, very, very strong in a lot of cases and so going after Hebei makes a lot of sense also the mapping on all these states is pretty good or well Beijing is not very good let's take a look at Beijing though the thing you the reason you take Beijing is the forbidden city which gives authority and legitimacy from having the head of state and government which is quite strong I believe it is subjected to malice uh yeah it is subjected to the malice from being unincorporated so we are incorporating both Beijing and Hebei because we do need to incorporate Hebei in order to make use of their company we are going to also have to you know switch to road carts on everything uh, but Hebei also has really good mapping. They have access to, you know, both iron and coal and uh, sulfur, and all of the Chinese states have a ton of pops. And so one of the strongest play patterns you can engage in, in general, is taking, uh, you know, one Chinese state and war reps off of them. Uh, the amount of infamy cost is based on, uh, you know, the amount of pop, but there is a cap, and I believe the cap is either reached at one or two million. And so generally you want to take really low population states that have a lot of resources or states with an enormous amount of population for which China fits the bill, and they also pay more war reps than anyone in the game, and so this is why this is a strong play pattern normally. Shangzi is the most resource dense state in the game. Uh, they also have oil that appears here. It hasn't appeared yet. Uh, and they have a ton of coal, a ton of iron, a great state to build in. They also have, you know, uh, agricultural and plantation throughput. And notably, um, Beijing, Hebei, uh, and, uh, or sorry, Beijing, Hebei, and uh, Shangzi, unfortunately, do not have rice, which is a little OP, but they are great for building, you know, silk and cotton uh, for the most part. Well, not uh, Shangzi, but uh, the cotton and silk uh, in Beijing and Hebei, which we are both incorporating now Yunnan is probably the best rice state in the game uh that can or the best rice state in China at least the best in the game is probably North Bengal uh which while it doesn't have coal uh has access to you know a very strong uh plus 15 percent agricultural throughput but coming back to Yunnan we took it or coming back to Yunnan uh we took it because it has you know a lot of coal and iron so it's a great state to build in we are kind of running out of coal and iron states in which to put uh well actually we're basically out of uh, really good coal and iron states in which to put construction for mappy consideration um, and so adding Yunnan to the mix will be good unfortunately we do need to incorporate to make best use of it but we're also going to click on the rice farm and click auto expand and this will be nice but uh, they all have really nice populations another consideration would have been taking Fujian into Jiangxi uh, which is probably the best uh, you know pop uh, one because this is 40 million pops and instead with our you know four province take we took what is this 22 uh, 
never do math when you're recording a video 36 around 40 million pops uh, and so maybe it would have been better to take Fuji, uh, Fuji on into Shang-Z Fuji on notably um, if I recall correctly yes they do have dies and so this is pretty good also a decent amount of logging GXZ has coal and so this would have been you know reasonable as well both have rice as well and so we could have done this but we decided to do it a little bit differently we're also going to put a level for qualifications reason we're going to put a level one uni in each of these um, and then, uh, you know, we will continue on our merry way. Uh, we only have five weeks until uh, we can try and subjugate uh, the United Netherlands, which is what it's all about here. All right, one day remaining on this truce here. Zero days, and there's no more truce, so... Uh, gonna have to open you up like a coconut and say, you are our protectorate now. Of course they will say no, and of course a bunch of people will join on their side. Probably all three of these. Wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, a pretty big join. We do not want to protectorate anyone at this point. So even if Brazil joins, we're not gonna protectorate them. We would just peel states off of them. Kind of low-key hoping France joins so we get the full encirclement. Uh, but we will be seeing in just a moment what the state of affairs is because they almost all join. Meow, loud car outside. Uh, they almost all join uh, right as the thing comes up so as you can see also the performance is not looking the best uh, things are progressing a little slowly is really no one going to join we'll put in a bunch of like war goals at the end here uh, if no one else joins uh, but this is wild also 125 maneuvers courtesy of uh, you know multilateral alliances technology the best uh, tech in the game if you're going on an ugly ugly rampage uh, because it gives you extra maneuvers uh, which will enable you to you know do some stuff man Really? No one's going to come in? Well, we're fine with a back down and something like this, but we'll get to that. Hey, the trade unions finally demarginalized. They're almost certain their bonuses are very strong, by the way. The workforce ratio in manufacturing industries throughput should help us out quite a bit. And, uh, you know, we can't slot them in, unfortunately, at least very easily. Ooh, I guess this is kind of okay, except for someone has to join the progress party, and yikes. Uh, this is even with the, uh, you know, kind of legitimacy we are getting from uh, having uh, the Forbidden City, but I think I think we're gonna go for this because we really do want uh, to pass some of their stuff and next election they'll join a party they'll get a lot more clout it'll be a lot nicer um, but for example now we can easily try and well somewhat easily go for stuff like this except for our intelligentsia boyo our intelligentsia boyo is a market liberal so maybe we should want to do something about that uh, and so let's take a look we could go for radical abolitionist uh, protectionist etc I uh, kind of we, do we want to use our invite and our thing just to avoid that? I mean, radical is not, like, necessarily even that good. Um, shoot. Is there really too much more we want to pass? I mean, we do want to get on to graduated taxation eventually. And, uh, that does require socialism. Maybe we'll research socialism coming up here. Maybe instead of combustion engine. Yeah, let's research socialism, actually, so we can get on to the, the ta next level tax system, which will kind of help us to empower the trade unionists a little bit more. So we'll just keep, uh, you know, bolstering them and maybe chill out for now, uh, because we do... The, one of the reasons we don't want to use our exile... Or actually, no, we would be in using an invite and a promote to government, not an exile. Okay, because each of these things has a five-year cooldown, but let's just do it. Um, so I guess we'll take the radical boyo. Oh, only show available. I guess we'll take what we can get, huh? So we'll invite that guy, and then we will promote him to government, and this will uh, grant leadership, rather. Uh, you need the Voice of the People DLC in order to do that interaction, and that will make it so that, uh, you know, only one person gets mad. And uh, it's just going to be the industrialists, and they're not going to be that mad. Now, this probably is not going to go through, but we haven't passed a law in a hot minute. Um... And so let's try and get this one through. We would like regulatory bodies. And if it fails, we can just try again in 700 days. So we get electricity, which is in its current state in 1.5, a pain, pain, pain to implement. And we will be slapping it down in a few places, uh, a few places strategically, uh, basically where we have kind of the most industrial base anyways, plus a couple other places. So Pennsylvania and New York over here. And then we will be slapping some down in Wallonia, Silesia, 
Bohemia, Austria, the capital, Styria, where we have built a lot, West Slovakia, where we have built a lot, Saxony, Westphalia, and then following this, we will start turning up PMs. There's a whole lot of PMs for us to turn up, uh, and so uh, this will also give us a lot more infrastructure. It'll be nice, particularly for wood, so we might want to target wood places later, but you notably don't want to do this unless you know you have um, available employment. It's going to be particularly nice in New York, because we do have the 20% building electricity output put so it'll be generally more efficient and new york and uh you know pennsylvania both have access to a lot of logging and electric sawmills is very strong pm and so this is kind of uh you know in theory it's going to be really nice on the logging places first and uh pennsylvania is going to be a nice industrial center that we are kind of bringing on up coming over here in wallonia i think we've finished incorporation so we're also going to talk about we have two new companies we're going to slot in we are going to notably get rid of skoda works uh which i think is well actually let's leave in skoda works the front advancement speed it might be actually just super good for us right now while we're rampaging um, but specifically there is a better uh, company than uh, Mavag and it is in uh, Belgium and then there's a better company than the generic iron uh, in Pennsylvania and so we'll just take a quick look at both of them we'll disband you can see that everything is kind of lagging um, so the John Cockrell company which appears uh, you know here is uh, in Wallonia specifically is going to give railway building throughput and it also gives tools uh, throughput on on steel and engines. I think that this is uh, the best uh, tooling workshop uh, probably company in the game. I'm not exactly, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I think it's quite strong and we will be getting railway throughput. Notably, we uh, had railway throughput on the one we got rid of. And so it's just a little bit of a slight upgrade. And then the second one is going to be Carnegie Steel, which appears in Pennsylvania, which is gonna give us again, more railway building throughput. So total, we will have 20% railway building throughput. Uh, to, we will get 20 or sorry 40 percent we will get 20 from our prosperity bonuses our two prosperity bonuses and also you know um i think that uh lead uh, or coal is preferred to lead and so having iron and coal together will be nice and we will also be getting an enormous amount of throughput uh specifically on steel mills because we're going to be getting 20 percent or actually we'll see exactly how much throughput we're getting why don't we come into let's bohemia we should have a top yeah we should have this and we are getting up to 110 percent throughput on this building uh 40 percent from the trade companies because they get less efficient the more companies you have we have four competing companies on steel uh but we will also this is without the powerful trade unions we can get up to 120 percent 140 percent if we put down an edict and then 150% if we put down an edict and we get the plus uh, you know throughput event on the edict and so really 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 Having a ton of throughput on steel is going to be, um, you know, nice. It does kind of depress the price of steel, so we do have to be, we are slightly concerned that we might lose our bonus, um, but we might also want to get rid of Bohemia Steel at some point because we are starting to reach the point where additional buildings are not really that useful. They're not fully employing. There's other stuff going on in the economy. And so maybe we want to slot out Bohemia Steel. Uh, notably, we are only doing this for the 10% state construction efficiency. So if this stops being able to be maintained we definitely slot it out but this is a really strong company 10 percent construction speed efficiency the construction speeds like what you get from most companies is really valuable and like for example uh well we'd slot out skoda works first but like uh this is giving us uh you know 35 percent construction speed on these three industries that's nowhere near as good as 10 percent uh just writ large um we are of course continuing this war and uh they're fully fully occupied and they're gonna you know give up soon hopefully hopefully bueller Bueller. Uh, they're not fully occupied over here, though, so I guess that's fair enough. And then we, once we finish this war, five years from then, we will be forming, we will be forming the HRE, or, you know, Central Europe. Karl Marx, you say? Shocked that we're somehow the first ones to research socialism, so, but, uh, okay, we get Marx in Germany, which is, uh, not per the usual. He was German, but he didn't leave in Germany, so now he's in charge here. Karl Henrik Marx, uh, who is going to, you know, obviously be a communist. We might end up, you know, overriding him because we want someone with a humanist ideology in order to pass multiculturalism or an anarchist, and traditionally you do this with the trade through the trade unionists. But he's going to be pretty popular while he's in charge of the IG. I guess we would have preferred him as a... a mm, I think if we choose the other event, he comes in as an agitator, which actually would have been preferable. But, um, okay. Either way. 
neat little thing. We get Karl Marx. If you're the first one to research socialism, you get Karl Marx, and we did so. Be nice. Please forgive us for the border gore we are about to commit. We know not what we do. Seizing Lithuania, Orsha, Novgorod, Smolensk, East Karlia, and Luhansk. Luhansk is for a company, though, not the border gore. So more than happy to uh, a world to win. We uh, flip it with the socialist ideas sweeping across Germany. To be fair, this actually is because, uh, you know, Marx is in office or he's in the government and he is, uh, you know... Uh, trade unions. This is one of the reasons why if you want to go communist, you can just research socialism really early uh, if it's essential. We aren't exactly looking to go communism, so perhaps we should have just chosen not to get marks, but it's a little bit of a novelty. But now we get to enact reg bodies for free, which we of course do, uh, and then we will look to increase the institution. We're going to need a lot more authority in order to increase it, uh, you know, to max rank here. And we do see... A little bit of this. What's this about? Conquer Liberia? Oh, baby. Our subject. United Mother Netherlands making money moves here. Interesting. Wow, isn't this neat? We have the opportunity to reduce our infamy by 10. That'll really help out, you know, in terms of how the world views us and thinks of us. You know, clearly this is something we're interested in. So we're going to do a move that don't do very often, which is, we have a secession movement coming up. By the way, I'm pretty sure you can save scum these in order for these to not appear, but that put aside, um, we would want to conquer Luhansk, except for, we want to start another war before the secession movement pops, and so we will, wait... Why can't you say yes? Okay, so we will propose a peace deal that they will accept, we, they will keep Luhansk, we will border gore the crap out of them, and, uh, you know... This is the this is the result. Of course, uh, their market is in Ingria, and so the entire point of this, well, we will we will have to start another war here. I think that we want to reduce autonomy, uh, and then I guess we don't need to force the play. The problem is, is we actually need to cause radicalism in Italian pops, but I think we can do that with just deleting a ton of buildings uh, later on down the road and increasing taxes and tax and grain. Um, but we do need to reduce their autonomy. I suppose we could annex... No, we can't annex Australia. Uh, we would want to annex these guys. They might say yes. I guess we'll reduce autonomy and then see how that play goes. Uh, so we'll reduce autonomy here. And then we'll take a look. If we leave it, uh, you know, uh, for one tick. Let's take a look at the Russian market. Let's see Paul Allen's market. Ho, 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 ho. Tears down the face. The Russian market is completely crushed uh, off the back of this. This will likely just completely undo everything for them. Uh, also really going to hurt Xing as well. But, you know, would not be surprised. Would not be surprised if uh, we see a little bit of decay uh, from the number of powers. Why are you stuck at major power? Because you're a subject of Russia? No way. No shout. Are you really in Russia's market? Jesus. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Not for long, you're not. Unless you're a protectorate. Are you a protectorate? Jeez, how did we not notice this? No, they're just in the customs union. So they're almost certainly going to leave, uh, you know, off the back of this being the thing. Big yikes. Well, following an election where they got to be part of a party, uh, you know, the trade unions get a bunch of clout. We probably don't need to bolster them anymore. And someone's popular because we have a bunch of extra authority. Not sure exactly what we want to use it on. Maybe bolster the Catholic Church, although I think that ship has sailed. Um, and uh, instead, I think we're, you know, starting to get into the trade unions, getting stuff uh, useful t uh, to us at least. And maybe we can sway into these things. The war is going okay. I mean, it's going kind of slow. Uh, because the game, as you can see, is going kind of slow. Uh, I mean, we're, the war is going incredibly fast. 90s all the way around. But uh, it's not going to uh, end very quickly on our end crush our secession movement, and so we'll see what we can do in regards to these sways over here. Hit a nice little breakpoint of 500 million pops and 1.5 billion GDP. Of course, our GDP map is all messed up. We are also almost certainly getting on to graduated taxation, and we are probably going to start lowering taxes to kind of help stimmy the economy. Additional construction, there's a lot of buildings that are just, uh, that kind of have labor available, but are not employing because the weekly balance is even. Uh, and so in order to help stimulate the economy, we could add more construction, but if marginal buildings, like an additional steel bill, is not going to, you know, increase the GDP, we would rather um, inject money by lowering taxes, which will increase increase consumption and so this will help if there's like for example a textile mill that's not fully employed what it will do is it'll help get it more employed um and so this will help to spin more money into the economy and so um 
I mean, we could add more construction, though. To be fair, uh, if our construction queue was filled, also maybe that steel would uh, be employing or would be at equilibrium employment at the very least, where it's not having any unemployment. We just finished Houseware Plastics, which is going to be a critical tech uh, for... Wow, we, do we really not have any glassworks in Silesia? Terrible. Silesia is an incredible state. Uh, probably the best state in the mid-game. It has uh, every resource and a decent amount of logging and a pretty high amounts of every resource. But, as I was saying, Houseware Plastics, we're going to turn on strategically in locations uh, where we know we have... Wow, we don't have one in Wallonia either. Wallonia, also a great state, has a little bit of every resource. Uh, and the idea is we're going to turn on Houseware Plastics in a, several areas. We can't turn it on everywhere uh, because we will not have enough oil to support it. Uh, but this will... Uh, yeah, you see the oil comes up in price. But this will give us a ton of opportunities for having really, really profitable buildings because now oil is expensive now we can build a ton of oil plants uh, and so this will give us you know kind of something good to do with our queue uh, that's useful and feels good our guys are showing up a little bit late to the front here but we get this absolutely massive war just going for you know an annex on burma and this war is uh they will pay for their crimes of course yeah okay um and this war, you know, annexing Burma, we had both Great Xing and uh, France also side against us. Our France front is a little bit wonky because of reasons. But both of them sided against us, and we are going to get the double bubble here. By double bubble, I mean we are going to create a bubble, yes, around France, because we have both taken both Provence and uh, Languedoc, and then we already created a bubble around Russia's market, and then we're going to create a bubble around, uh, you know, so I guess it's a triple bubble around the Great Xing market, which this is their market capital here in uh, Guangdong, if they leave Russia's market, which Russia's dilapidated market's continuing on to uh, the best it can, uh, but we're going to completely cut off the French market here, and we're going to completely, and we get that, so that's big nice. I think we're going to maybe reduce taxes on the back of that, maybe we actually have to keep them the same you have to little wait a week but we are annexing burma conquering provence Languedoc, guangzi shaozhou gngz uh GNZ notably just taking it for pops it's got like 25 million and so this is going to be you know a pretty big one someone's launching a player against us crazy insanity um it's in cape colony i guess we'll put it down but um yeah so this is how this is what's going on right now uh you know this is probably going to be the second, or this is probably going to, this might even be the last big war before we form the HRE, but we might not do that this episode, because this is dragging on. As you can see, this is the current state of affairs. Uh, so we're probably going to actually have two more episodes, and they're going to be uh, relatively on the shorter side. The new system that allows you to have multiple battles per front is definitely allowing for some things that, uh, you know, you couldn't do previously. I don't think I've ever occupied this much of China without them capitulating um, at any point in time, and they and yet they still haven't capitulated. They would be okay giving us the whole bag, but since they're the secondary leader, they're a little bit stickier, uh, which is fine with us. Uh, France is also full occupied, and of course, uh, they're just chilling. So, yeah, uh, this is the, the state of affairs. We also researched automobiles uh, in terms of NAT spread combustion engine which is nice uh, we will get to turn on you know public motor care or we will get to turn on motorized reconnaissance to help make some of these um, you know go a little bit faster why don't we smoke in cabaret let's see Let's not do the one that gives us minus bureaucracy. Um, and uh, we will just need to find a place where we can turn on a uh, first little bit of cars uh, in order to seed them. Uh, in theory, we do want to prioritize places that have oil, which is why we turn them on in Pennsylvania. Um, this We also have a lot of demand for oil currently, which is going to make these places a lot more profitable. Also, we get the second level on this, so we will be able to turn that on, which is uh, you know pretty good. The problem is we just don't have enough demand for it. Yikes. Uh, we have to fix some territory up. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the problem is really the demand. Oil is very, very strong, and we are more than doubling it here in the queue. The queue is also kind of big. Um, but, uh, yeah, we will be annexing very, very shortly. Or we will be cutting off from the market both France and uh, Great Britain. Or, not Great Britain, Ching here. We have become death, destroyer of markets. Uh, just to kind of update, we did pass the 10k prestige mark. Aren't really actively pushing the prestige that much because it's not like we're going to protect it and then annex anyone. Although sometime down the line, you know, in order to maintain 
France is almost down to like major power status and Great Xing um, probably isn't going to decay lower than that. But I mean, maybe we could make maybe we could swing that. You know, the USA definitely could uh, uh, decay, especially if we took Texas from them, which would completely crush their market access because their trade capital is in the District of Columbia. And so all it takes would take is taking Texas and then we could protect them very easily. I have to pay respects to all the markets we killed this, uh, you know, this episode. Um, you know, we killed uh, the Russian market here. Uh, if Russia ever releases Qing, we will have the Qing market killed as well because the capital is in Guangdong. And of course, you know, France is surrounded. You thought surrounds were only in Hoi 4? Terrible. You, so they have literally zero market access anywhere else. Not that they really have much anywhere else because, uh, well, it's just kind of that. Look, we can highlight, oh, you got this here, you got Haiti, but like, really uh you know france expecting to see them kind of collapse as well because they can only trade with Brittany, and Brittany is in the breton market and not the french market the france could get them in the market though uh but uh you know you, we can see their gdp it's not looking so hot it's not looking so hot so uh you know this episode we crush markets f's to pay respect i hope you enjoyed if you did please uh feel free to like comment subscribe next episode what we will be doing is we will be annexing spain so we will be waiting a full you know it's going to be five years uh until we can annex spain and then we will be forming uh the uh hre um we have to wait on this truce uh, and then we can reduce their autonomy and then we'll annex spain and then we'll form a nice big hre we might even just forego spain and just form an hre uh after reducing these guys infamy which feels a little bit silly but um i think that maybe it makes some sense um uh, God, we want to take some territory off of these guys because we need to increase Italian radicalism, but that's something for next episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. YouTube algo stuff, and have a good day.